Good evening, dear colleagues. We've had special questions about the necessity of psychologists for the collective. And I am one of the representative of the team where there is a psychologist for the nurses. And we have not only lectures, but my colleagues can come to individual consultations to me where we discuss some problems, some conflicts, the condition of the patients. I've got six minutes, right? So the six minutes belong to Ekaterina Borisovna, so thank you, Ekaterina Borisovna. So what we are going to discuss today is conflict-free communication. What I want to say right away is that conflict-free communication is the notion that is as a notion, but is absent as a phenomenon, because it's almost impossible to create the, conf uh, the conflict-free area, because sometimes there is some argument argument where that leads us to some truth but sometimes there is a conflict that can have some severe conf consequences so first of all let's define the term so conflict is uh, interaction of people with different of uh, contrary visions views on the same problem it's very important to say so we're not going to look at it in detail, for example, I have a client and she says, my daughter-in-law is horrible. She wants my favorite son to provide everything to her and she asks her for some unreal things. But in my opinion, it's the conflict and I can analyze it according to this chart. So it will be destructive, dysfunctional conflict. Realistic because it's an actual situation. And if it's interpersonal conflict, meanwhile it is. But if I ask her, uh, what about your husband? Does he need to provide everything for you? And she says, yes, of course, of course. And when I ask, and should uh, some other woman provide everything for her? She says, yes, it's like normal. It's uh, in our tradition. She will be in maternity leave. So this interpersonal conflict turns out to be uh, not inter but intrapersonal. So actually we can analyze it according to this chart. And when we stop saying Marivan is a bad woman, but we say uh, we've got a conflict from destructive condition, it co turns into constructive condition because conflict is something that aims to be solved. This term this term you need to get rid of. You can hate someone, but if you have a conflict, you need to get rid of him. There is another point. So if you feel some bad attitude towards someone, just take this table and understand what it is in what cluster you are, why your attitude towards the person is like this. So the negative function of the conflict is, uh, there are quite a lot, so usually make me read psychology in 15 minutes, but the most horrible here for the collective, it's this, this shadow because if you solve it even productively it has some shadow even if we solved it this shadow can exist for quite a long time but it exists and for the colleagues uh, while interacting within the team it's very difficult the positive functions of the conflict exist in numbers first of all it's the identifying of your own values so before my husband started to shout at me, I hadn't understood that I, I, I was not ready to put up with it. So when your boss starts talking to you in a rude manner, you understand that those are the borders and I don't want to put up with it. I'm ready to save the borders. 
So usually conflicts unite uh, partners. So usually uh, there are bosses who actually create some conflict to unite some department, especially if there already is existing conflict. When we make friends against someone, our inner conflict seem to be completely slight. But it should be very accurately with very experienced bosses, with very experienced managers, and they usually work. And they really promote Putting priorities, we start. Uh, we start using consultants because without a lawyer, we cannot solve the problem. We consult it without an economist, without a psychologist. So interfamily conflict can enlarge the zone of specialists you need to solve the problem. There are lots of methods to solve the conflict. So first of all, you need to understand that it's a process and it's not comfortable for you. So the methods and the people will appear very soon. For example, we've got me. We've got a very good manager. So any head of the department wants the relationship in the department to be positive and he tries to f solve the conflicts. If we have conflicts with the patient, with the client, we need to understand correctly if it's us conflicting with him or him conflicting with us who has the complaint. So as soon as we understand what we need to do to get rid of it, we solve it. You need to remember that it's impossible to have conflict-free situation. Nowadays, we have 15 common recommendations to stop the conflict, to seize it. First of all, constant attention to the partner. So egocentrism, it's the main problem of all the conflicts. I want something. I want, I'm not pleased with something. But there is always some other person. So walk in his shoes. And sometimes we realize that it's very strange. I, I'm a practitioner. And sometimes when there is a session, I, I, I ask them to role play. And they are very surprised to understand that it's a very complicated position for our, uh, uh, for their partner. It usually has to be friendly attitude. So those of my colleagues who know me in palliative therapy, I usually say, don't, don't be afraid to be a, pa a patient. But taking into consideration our hedonistic epoch and this fear of death, the medical worker cannot imagine him to be a patient. So it's very impossible for them to imagine themselves as a terminally ill patient. But sometimes it's very, very useful to walk in their shoes. What would I want if I feel so bad? So friendly and respectful attitude. So natural attitude in reflection of your feelings. You, so it's the mirror method. Start talking as he does. So it's the volume, the speed. Sometimes the person starts to get connected to you, especially it works with patients because they're suppressed. It's a very rare situation when it's a positive reason to come to us, to sympathize, to underline common interests to come and to say, Lyudmila Petrovna, we've got a conflict. I don't want it to exist. We have a common goal. We'll, we want this goal. Let's sit down and talk about it, please. Communication in the team is very shallow, but it is caused by the modern tendency to computerize everything. But actually, this digital pseudo-debilism uh, exists it made hyperactivity syndrome grow into children. 
So now it's in the universities and it's due to our gadgets we are concentrated on. So learn how to admit rightfulness if the person is correct. So tell him, I understand that you are right. I feel really confused, but you are right. Thank you for your, for this conflict. I understand that you are right. And I feel calm. You should have self-control. I usually tell a story when I had chicken pox as an adult. Uh, I worked in aid center and I, I got this chicken pox because I didn't have it in childhood. And the chief nurse in the infectious department, she was criticizing the other medication, the other stuff. I was sitting in my ward and I was thinking, who's nervous if it's the chief nurse or what the ordinary nurse could have done? What if that nurse could have come to me and just inject something wrong? We all just looked out and we were very frightened. You need to know how to criticize. You need to base on the facts and not to expand it to many, many years. Try to solve it as soon as possible. You need to s offer alternatives. If it's impossible to solve, sit down and think together how to solve it. You need to demonstrate your interest. Uh, you need to increase uh, the significance of your partner. You are very important to me as a colleague, as a partner. Let's consider. So as for verbal and uh, nonverbal methods, it's the method of mirror. It's very important to exclude mistakes in the very beginning. So usually people uh, getting uh, taken manager position, they start gathering a new collective, a new team. So it's very important when we come to the team, I will understand what we need from you. And this is the instruction how to use me. It should be like that. We come to the interview. We are told what the organization is, but we need to talk about ourselves as organization. You may say, you should praise me regularly. I work better. If you want to say something honestly, just say it at once. You'd better write to me because I'm very nervous. So if you've got some complaints, just write in WhatsApp because I'll just have it better solved. It's individual approach to your employees. Point it out. We help our managers to communicate with us. It's the problem of all the relationship between men and women. We ask too few questions <laughs> about ourselves because we are full of hormones. And in three months, it turned out that he had a wife. And whoa. And of course, the formula of constructive and positive responsibility. So positive, constructive, learn how to communicate as professionals. I always say, apart from us, every person has so much pain, so much sorrows. Please don't add more. Coming into somebody's life, leave light there. It's professional. We work in the socially uh, notable profession because we try to help the patients, but we harm each other. It's not OK because it's the significance we measure. It's not OK. And this mutual responsibility, divide it, share it. If you see it's the mistake, just come to him and say it's not his, it's our, because it's very important to stay shoulder by shoulder. And also teaching, we've got a very good schedule, according to which the nurses, it's more difficult with physicians, we have effective time management, the skills for managing for senior services, prof, uh, prof, prevention of professional burnout, conflict and how to work with it. We get together, we discuss it, 
people call, people come. I've got this pair problem with my colleague. And also we have this mentoring with tutoring project. It will be a working document. I will be in charge for it. We will have the council of tutors. It will be our great cardinal for managing this and we will solve the problem. And those people will have special skills how to save good atmosphere in department, how to solve the conflicts, how to be the soul of the department and to give light where it seems to be dark. And the last life hug, I just give it to you. It's the principles of working with aggressions. When I ask uh, dear colleagues, how do you react to the aggression of uh, patients? They say, I uh, I just keep silent and smile at home, and at home I just shout, shout at, in response because you need to stand for yourself. So first of all, when you see aggression towards you, any person from any person in the street, relative, just remember, remember this person has pain inside. The more the patient reacts to the simplest situations, uh, they usually say, what pain can he have? She's uh, just a very hateful woman. But I say, what pain can this person has that she or he has this patient? It's very difficult. It's professionalism. So for the first time, I didn't feel OK. But after that, I say, I'm a psychologist. The, pay, the, the the person can be in bad mood. Maybe he doesn't have mother. This this uh, phrase really can have, because we don't know the war this patient has there somewhere out of this space. And it's a very important to understand that in medicine, the person doesn't shout at you. So usually we are like, we are going to fight for our inner borders. So you should complain for, just remember, the patient doesn't shout at you. The patient shouts just to ask for help. Actually, it's so difficult for us to express emotions. We need to cry, but we shout because we are used to it. We need to turn on sympathy. It's not pity. It should sound like I can see your pain. I see it, your pain, it's not mine. When you need to support oncologic patient, don't say I understand you. You do not understand him. But you may say, I can see how hard it is for you. It will be honest. It will be some honest support. Oh, yeah. Next point. Don't stay under the uh, crane. What's the most important rule for negotiating? You know this. No variance. What? Earlier, you shouldn't stand opposite. If you come to, if you are dating and you sit at the table, you shouldn't sit uh, opposite of the table. One shouldn't stand opposite of each other. I will shout, but unfortunately, uh -huh. for example, Katerina is coming, approaching me and shouting at me. 
shouting at me, trying to say something to me. If she is my colleague and we are confident and uh, we embrace when we congratulate everybody with a birthday, I say this. Stop shouting, Catherine. Uh, what's happening? I embrace her and I start uh, going uh, together with her. With her. If I don't know a patient, for example, there is a patient and she shouting, not at me, but to me. I stay in such a posture with a band of the hand. I, uh, I show that I am interested in this person. I look in the eyes, or not in the eyes, but at uh, the forehead. Uh, she starts moving around, uh, and I again regain my position. It does work. It's physiology. There are no nuances here. Next point. If emotion starts, the emotion may end. You shouldn't cement it. Otherwise, everything will explode. Uh, because we put in, put in, put in, and uh, it's a very good mantra. I feel the anger. I understand the anger. I am conscious of the anger. I expect this, and I leave it up. And I allow this. I, I allow to this emotion to happen. If a person comes to me uh, and she starts shouting and we started to reprimand him or started to uh, shout at him in response, I have worked uh, at the AIDS center for 10 years. Young people die, a mother comes to an incurable patient. And the first question the mother asks, why didn't you feed uh, this person? At that time, we didn't provide nutritional support to these terminal patients. And we answer, if we started uh, uh, feeding him, he will die faster because he didn't have uh, swollen reflect. Reflex. Reflex. And then uh, she comes up and uh, asks why you don't do fluid therapy to him. Um, and uh, we explain simply uh, that uh, we started to explain in simple language uh, the reasons for that. And then she comes out of ICU and she started shouting so greatly at nurses, reprimanding them for different things. Uh, the girls, uh, they were knowledgeable how to use uh, this technique. She was not shouting at him. She was shouting to uh, at them. She was shouting uh, to them. Uh, during the morning, so during the bearing, uh, burial service, uh, we used to have uh, uh, old women who were weeping uh, in a very, very high voices. Uh, why did they do that? So that to make men to start crying, to start weeping, otherwise uh, they will may develop a heart attack. This woman, she understood that her child was going to die and she started to shout at nurses, what shall we do? Just to ask questions, just maybe to, uh, to ask, how can I help you right now? Right now, it's a keyword. If, for example, you ask her, how can I help you? Uh, she may have uh, said that just collect money for funeral. And uh, you ask a question, what can I do for you right now? After that, usually uh, they come down and they ask for simple things, to phone to the husband, to, um, uh, to do some simple things. Sometimes uh, the role of psychologists and nurses uh, 
are exaggerated, the role is exaggerated. We don't use some kind of sophisticated methods, some questionnaires, they consist of 500 questions. Sometimes our task, our uh, task is the following, just sit next to this person, be uh, with this person while a person is weeping, uh, just to sit silently. It uh, doesn't take up a great deal of time. It's a very simple technique. Uh, it does work. It has been working for many years. If you have any questions left, you can phone me, you can, you can email me.